have some nice music on this. Yeah, we're back with Project Ego. And let's load up where we last left off. We go back to the office for a bit and notice the sun is already down. Hey, I may have read your lead I can look into. I'll let you know if I can find anything. All right, I'll contact you if I find anything out. Same. We nod at each other and Lucas steps out the door. I sigh heavily and walk over to the window. What am I going to do? I have to help find Liza's dad. She can't end up like... Like me. If only Cooper were here. If only he wasn't so damn stubborn. I'm telling you, I saw what I saw. Well, there's just no way. I won't believe you. And I can't believe you. Dad was not that kind of guy, and I'll prove it to you. T, you have to trust me on this. No, Coop, you are the one who needs to trust me for once. We've talked about this so many times, I can't even count anymore. You never listen to me. Fine, I'll prove Dad's innocence on my own. Goodbye, Coop. The door? Who could that be? Uh, excuse me? Is this the private detective's office? I heard from Danny that you just moved in up here. Ah, uh, yes, it's the Occam Detective Agency. I'm sorry, though, I'm not really ready to take clients yet. And I've just gotten... You are searching for that little girl's father, right? Danny told you that too? He reaches his hand out to greet me. Her name's Reed. I work at the bar downstairs. I might have overheard some information that can help. Really? Well, I'm Tristan. Come on inside. Now, what is this information? Well, I was on the floor the other day and I heard something out of the corner of the bar. It sounded like... like they were planning a robbery of a jewellery store. Are you sure? Do you know the patron? He shakes his head softly. Oh, I know what I heard, but I'd never seen the one guy before. A larger rhino fella. His face was pretty scarred. Did you hear anything else? His head shakes again. I'm afraid not. It was just too busy and loud in the bar. They certainly weren't shouting that business either. I'm sorry. Well, thank you for the information. That'll certainly help. He looks a bit troubled, biting his lip and shooting his gaze to the side. Are you okay? Um, well, I do kind of need some help. It wouldn't feel right turning him down if he offered his help. I can hear him out, but Liza's dad will have to take priority. Oh, well, what seems to be the problem? Well, my brother, he's missing. Another missing person? Your brother? Oh, Reed, I'm so sorry. I want to help, but I'm only one otter. Hmm. When was the last time you saw him? He seems a little unsure of how to answer at first and stumbles over his words. Well... It's been about five years. Five years? Reed. He just disappeared out of nowhere and the police have given up on him. They say he's probably dead. His face grows a bit pale. I can see tears welling up in his eyes. I know he's not. I know he's still out there. Look, I know you can't drop everything and look, but I tend to hear a lot of stuff in the bar. I wouldn't mind sharing information if you could just maybe keep an open ear. Oh, I can definitely do that, Reed. I'm so sorry to hear about this. He seems to pep up a bit after that. My shift's about to start. Thank you, Tristan. Oh, don't mention it. With that, he disappears out the door and down to the bar below. It's completely dark out now and the nightlife is coming out. After all day of gathering information, I've gathered some info. But I'm still not sure just what lead to follow up on. So let's see. First, there was Officer Jacob Kennedy. According to him, someone was murdered at around 3am last night, and the police have no suspects. He also mentioned the stolen Sunfire rubies rumoured to have the power to communicate with the dead. Also, he seems interested in working with me. I doubt the police can help on any kind of official level. They certainly seem to have their hands full. 
but maybe he can help me get an actual look at that crime scene. There is always Lucas. From the footage he gathered, it seems that Liza's father was not the murderer. It's hard to believe he's completely innocent, though, as when he saw the body, his main concern seemed to be searching for something. He seems to think he has some kind of lead to go on, too. Maybe I could see what he has going on? I also never asked him how he managed to get that footage from the jewellery store. That reporter, Quinn, also might be a good lead to follow. According to her, there have been a lot of strange happenings at the store re- lately. The owner in particular was acting strange and out of character. Liza's father, the owner, and another employer are all missing. So the body on the floor is either the owner or the other unaccounted for employee. She seems eager to try and get a leg up on this case. I feel like she may know more than she lets on. I can see if Reed knows anything else. This bar seems like a good source of information. He said they overheard a large rhino patron talk about robbing the jewellery store, but not much else. Being a bartender, he probably hears a lot of interesting things. Maybe something that wasn't quite as obvious passed through the bar. A little more time and we may unearth something. But time is one thing I'm severely short on. This decision is important, and it very well could be the life or death for Liza's father. Hmm. So here we go. This is, as far as I can tell, where the routes will diverge, and this way we make our choice about who to go with. Now, Quinn was supposed to be updated in the... Uh, last update but it didn't happen and of course nothing's happened since then so we only have at the moment these three of lucas jake and reed to choose from and just because i'm going to leave some things open here that my if you've noticed when i normally do these uh, vns i don't do every single route like uh, i've just done leo and tj and echo just doing switch in tennis ace just lars and parker and after class that kind of thing so even though this may never be made any further i'm just going to stick to that we're just going to go with uh, one route and you can definitely check up lucas and reed uh, if you want to take your time and uh, download it it is available still but anyway just to let you know what i'm thinking here let's just see what's up with jake while the police in blue haven might not be the most competent i can tell there's something special about jake it just seems so genuine not to mention he said he might have something to show me if I stop by later. That seems as good a lead as any. I lock up the office and step outside into the warm, humid air. Gazing up the street, I can see in the distance it looks like all the crowd has left the scene outside the jewellery store. I doubt he's still there, but it can't hurt to go take a look. As the scene comes into view, it looks like the shifts have changed. Standing where Jake used to be was a burly horse, looking groggy and unamused by his assignment. You over there, can I help you? I look around for a moment, there's no one else. He must be referring to me. He looks much more awake now and shoots a suspicious gaze in my direction. Oh, uh, actually I was looking for someone. Uh, Do you know the coyote that was standing guard here earlier? The horse has a suspicious look on his face as he crosses his arms. Well, I might. What's it to you? Compared to Jake's demeanour, this officer is quite different. I can see why they gave Jake the day shift. This guy is much more intimidating. I wonder if that's why most of the crowd has dissipated from the scene. I remember Lucas's warning that most of the police force didn't particularly like private detectives, so I refrain from mentioning that. I just needed to talk to him about something. He says nothing and just continues to stare, clearly waiting for more information. I scratch the back of my head and stare at the sky. Earlier we were talking and he asked if I wanted to meet up later. His eyes quickly widen and his ears perk up. He walks up to me and pats me on the back with enough force to nearly knock me over. It's so hard I can't help but lurch forward and cough. I stare up at him confused and he just responds with a wink. Ah, so you're the one he's been talking about lately? Hmm? What's he talking about? Uh, <laughs> uh, you got me. I smile nervously and play along. Hey, I was gunning for him to get tonight off too. That poor guy has not had a date in months. He gives me another nudge, this time a lot more playful. But hey, it's not actually too far from here. Let's end up putting him on the beat around 5th Street. He points down to a fairly residential area of town. He always puts on a happy face, but all of us can tell something's been bothering him. He wraps a big bulky arm around me and grins. So treat him right, okay? Oh, uh, uh, sure. I didn't know what else to say. 
I feel the blood rush back to my head as he lets me loose from his grip. Or maybe the blood was rushing to my face for a different reason. He shifts his weight back and smirks. Oh, and a word of advice? He's a shy one, that coyote. If you want anything to happen, you're going to have to be the one to make the move. I blink a few times, taken aback at how forward he's been. But his intentions seem genuine enough, so I give him a nod. You got it. Getting mistaken for Jake's date isn't exactly what I had in mind, but at least I was able to find out where he is. I clear my throat and bid the officer farewell as I head down the road in the direction of 5th Street. Jake couldn't have actually been talking about me, could he? My composure finally returns to normal as the road sign for 5th Street comes into view. So the officer said he's patrolling somewhere around here. It doesn't take me long to spot him. This area of town seems relatively quiet and his bright presence is kind of hard to miss. With the street light beaming overhead, I raise a paw and shoot him a smile. He notices me almost immediately and starts walking over. Even through the dark, I can tell he's smiling. Well, hey there. I wasn't sure I'd see you again. You'll find anything out about the... Jake, I think someone is in danger. I need your help to save them. His grin changes to a more serious face. I'd be a bit disappointed to see his smile fade, but someone's life may be on the line. What's going on? Who's in danger? One of the employees from the jewellery store you were guarding earlier. I found his daughter. She hasn't seen him since he left for work this morning. Well, the murder happened last night, so he very well may have walked in on the body this morning. There was no telling what else had been, may have been waiting for him. He rests his chin on a paw and looks up to the sky for a moment. But you seem pretty certain. So what makes you so sure his life's in danger? I hesitate for a moment. I'm sure that what Lucas did to get that video feed wasn't exactly legal. Should I tell him? Oh, we're asking for his help. I think we should trust Jake. If I was expecting Jake's help, I may as well give him all the information that I have. A friend of mine kind of hacked the system. We saw some footage from after the murder had already happened. It looked like so someone this little... It looked like this little girl's father was in trouble. I want to help. Jake's eyes seem to swell a bit. He seems really grateful I'm trusting him. Is there any way we could get a closer look at that crime scene? He shifts his eyes and gives a little sigh. Well, I don't know. If I leave my beat, my lieutenant's not going to be too happy with me. But I have an idea. Follow me. I nod and we head back in the direction of the jewellery store. He breaks the silence as we walk, clearly trying to ease the awkwardness a bit. You know, this isn't exactly how I planned on spending my night. I think back to what the horse officer had told me earlier. Oh yeah, you had a date, right? He gasps and swallows hard a bit, avoiding eye contact. Well, what are you talking about? I can already tell from his face that he's embarrassed. Him stumbling over his words just confirms it. When I was trying to find you, the officer seemed to think. He cuts me off before I can finish. Oh, we're well, here. The same horse officer was slumped near the entrance of the jewellery store, looking as bored as ever. Well, let me see what I can do. He walks over to the horse, who perks up again upon seeing him and starts talking to him. I'm standing a bit too far to hear anything. They glance over at me a few times and the horse gives him a sly grin. I see the much larger creature get him in a headlock for a moment, then pat his back roughly, before walking back off in the direction that we came from. Jake walks back up to me again, looking rather dishevelled from his interaction with the other officer. We're good. What exactly did you say? His ears lower bashfully and he shifts his eyes. Um, it's not important. Ray switch shifts with me for tonight. We didn't tell her the lieutenant. He grips my paws tightly in his own again and gazes directly at me. Well, if she found out I could be in deep trouble, please, we have to be careful. Glancing around the features of his handsome face, I flick my ears back a bit and nod. I won't let you lose your job on my account, I promise. That seems to ease his worries a bit. He clasps onto my paw a bit longer before smiling and heading toward the entrance, beckoning me to follow. I stare at my paw a bit after he lets go, and for a moment daydream about reaching back out to grab his. No, there's no time for that. Someone's life is on the line. I shake it off and step forward into the jewellery store behind him. I'll stand watch out front. We should be all good, but just in case. All right. An overwhelming odour hits my nostrils, causing my face to wince in reaction. 
to emanate in from the obvious body at the centre of the room, covered up by what looks like a tarp. So they just leave the body here. Jake stays outside, but peeks his head in so I can hear him. Well, I guess they were too busy today. It's not that uncommon. He almost sounds ashamed at that last sentence. Let's take a look at this body. Winston again, I make my way to the covered body at the centre of the room and gently lift the tarp. The victim was an older raccoon gentleman, the owner of the jewellery store. Well, I guess there isn't much of a store left. I'm immediately reminded of Liza again and hope she's doing okay. His eyes are still open and his dead stare makes me shiver. He's lying in a puddle of his own blood that has seeped from the large wound on the side of his head. The police have no idea what the murder weapon was, right? Well, nothing was recovered, no. Something definitely punctured the side of his head. By the looks of it, it must have been someone of incredible strength. The tiny hole in his head is bruised around the sides. There doesn't seem to be any of the signs of struggle on his body. Perhaps someone snuck up behind him and struck the side of his head, piercing his temple and knocking him out. At that point, all that's left is to bleed to death while unconscious. I notice my paw shaking a bit and steady my breathing. Steady in my grip, I gently lay the tarp over the body and take a step back. Dread fills my mind, fueled by the rotting corpse not a few feet in front of me. No, I have to focus. Lies is depending on me. I turn back to the scene. So now... These footprints. There are several sets of footprints at the entrance. These have to be from looters, right? There are so many sets here. Well, that'll be my guess. I know that the murderer didn't actually steal anything, and neither did Liza's father. When the store was left unlocked, it probably was burglarised before the police even knew that the crime had taken place at all. If only I'd gotten the chance to look at these before the looters came in, they might have been more of a help. Right now, all that's clear from this is the fact that multiple looters came into the building after it was left unlocked this morning, then ransacked the place. All right. All of display cases are shattered across the store, their contents long gone. Upon further inspection, I find a large case behind the counter that's still mostly intact. This case may have held something of particular value, as the inside contained multiple cushioned surfaces around the stand. The door of the case is swung open, and the ornate stand in the centre is empty. This must be where Liza's father was checking on that footage that Lucas recovered. Or if this is where that special gem that Jake mentioned earlier was kept. The Sunfire Ruby, I think he called it? The corner of my eye catches something while I'm turning around. Is that blood? There's a tiny spatter of blood on the corner of the counter. Jake, I found some blood. His ears perk and he steps inside to take a look. Well, I don't remember hearing about them finding any blood. They must have missed it. Hmm. He stood silent for a moment, thinking for nodding solemnly. There's someone back at the lab that owes me a favour. I bet we could get this analysed pretty quickly with him on it. Jake produces a small Q-tip in a plastic bag and takes a sample of the blood. This might be the owner's blood, but it seems strange for it to be all the way over here. Our first real clue. I push back my feeling of excitement when Liza's face comes back into my thoughts. I can get this analysed right after we're done here. I nod and glance over the scene again. Let's see... The moment I see the camera in the corner, I know that it's the same one that Lucas had shown me the footage from earlier. That security camera, can we access the footage from it? It doesn't seem like the footage goes anywhere from what our tech guys could figure out. It's one of those new Omnicare models. I guess the footage goes directly to the owner and that's it. I guess if the data is stored, it's only the owner that keeps up with it. Have the police looked into that yet? Actually... I think they've already filed this case as unsolved and moved on. He flattens his ears. What? They're giving up on a murder after only a day? Well, everything going on lately, I guess they thought it was more of a mugging gone wrong and not any kind of pattern. Are the police here really that strapped for resources? Well, I have to keep going. For Liza's sake. Jake doesn't change his expression as he quietly returns to keeping watch. Well, if Lucas was able to recover some of the data, it must be stored somewhere. I check the communicator, but it is silent. I'll have to follow up with Lucas later about that. For now, I think I've learned all I'm going to from this place. All done? 
The coyote wanders back in. I can see him trying to look at the corpse in the centre of the room. Yeah, I think we're good. Well, let's go to the station and meet my friend in the lab. What about guarding the scene? Jake seems conflicted for a moment and sighs. But well, this is more important. Don't get in trouble onto my account. He looks at me earnestly. Well, what should I do? I don't think we're going to learn a whole lot more from this. But we could learn something from the blood. This might be our only clue to finding Liza's dad. Let's get that blood analysed. Jake quickly nods and smiles. You're absolutely right. So it's settled. Follow me. We head away from the jewellery store and back towards the police station, which is only a short walk away. So I'm curious, how did you convince the other officer to switch shifts with you? I see him tense up as I finish my question. His eyes avoid all contact and he stammers over his words. Oh, uh, well, I I kind of told him. I can practically feel the heat emanating from his face. But I, uh, I wanted to spend some time with you. Alone. His thin muzzle is pointed toward the ground, watching his feet move. Oh, I can't help but feel the corners of my lips curl into a smile. Well then, we made it to the station. The station is where we are at. He feels the last few moments before we arrive, stuttering and repeating about how we have arrived. Cute. Okay, just wait out here a bit. I'm going to take this to my friend in the lab and see what he can do. I nod and give the coyote a smile as he heads inside, isting another cute expression out of him. As the door shuts behind him, I turn around and glance upon the city. All at once, a day's worth of fatigue catches up on me and I feel utterly exhausted. My thoughts drift back to Liza and her missing father. I wonder how she's doing right now. Probably terrified. She might be thinking she'll never see her father again. Thought provokes an all too familiar feeling. This is what you'd have wanted, right Dad? I'm going to help Liza's father. She's not going to end up like me. I won't let it happen. Is everything okay? All of a sudden Jake is standing in front of me with a concerned look on his face. Hmm? I snap out of my daze and shake my head, giving him a smile. Oh yeah, I'm just fine. Well, the analysis isn't going to get any results until tomorrow morning. Maybe you should go get some rest. You look beat. I know he's right. Is there really nothing left I can do but wait? Each hour that goes by, it's less and less likely that Liza's father will still be alive. I shake off a bit of vertigo and stumble forward a bit. Before I realise it, Jake's arms are wrapped around me, steadying my balance. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, it's it's just been a long day. Your office is just above the bridge, right? I promise I'll bring the results by as soon as I have them. He rubs a warm paw over my back. For now, just go get some rest. Deciding against arguing with the officer, I just nod and take a small step back from him. Both of us start walking back in the direction of the bridge. Bit of silent awkwardness between us. The good kind. Thanks, Jake. Oh, no need to thank me. I took this job to help people. Thanks to you, I might finally get the chance. We share one last smile together before he heads off towards the jewellery shop. I stare at the door to my office before heading in. One day here and already all this has happened. Am I really ready for all this? There are already people depending on me. If only Cooper were here, I'd feel so much better. He'd be able to keep his cool and know exactly what to do. I decided it might be a good idea to share what I found with Quinn, Reed and Lucas. Maybe if we all share the information we found, we just might be able to save him. It's only a moment after my head hits the pillow that my consciousness fades away. And there we go. That's uh, basically as far as Tristan's route goes at the moment. I say you can uh, talk to Reed or you can talk to uh, Lucas as well. Those are the other two options that can be done but it goes no further than this unfortunately and we'll see if it ever does because i really want to know what's going on in blue haven and uh will we get together with jake will he be a romance option i hope so i, I like jake that's why i went that route anyway what i'm gonna do next with ego is to switch back to where we were earlier and i'm not going to play the prologue but i'll make the other choices in that one and then we'll pick up with Cooper's route and we'll do the same kind of thing. A couple of videos on his. We're doing one of the uh, 
options there. It's different people will meet and he has a different story going on, but it will interact slightly with this one and I guess things will come together later if it gets written. But that's not going to be the next uh, on hiatus video. I'm just going to take a quick break and switch to the other VN I've talked about. So that will be the next one. And then once I've done uh, two or three videos with that, we'll wrap up on hiatus with the rest of Project Ego. And that will be this little series uh, done with. So I hope you've been enjoying the Project Ego and Tristan's Roots. Like I guess say, I really want to see this continue. But uh, I'm not that hopeful. But anyway, until next time, bye for now.